In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's top fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, we answer fitness and health questions asked by listeners like you. Now, the way we open the episode is with the introductory com conversation where we talk about ourselves, current events. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So I'm going to give you the rundown of what happened in today's podcast episode. We start out by talking about a sex game gone wrong. Uh-oh. Somebody messed up. Our favorite. Then we talked about Mommy No Balls Andrews. <laughs> she loves that nickname. That's a good time. Yeah. Uh, I talked about how Trump signed an executive order affecting social media. This is unprecedented. Mm. Kind of crazy. We talked about gyms and restaurants reopening. I talked about how coronavirus uh, probably can't get transmitted that easily on contaminated surfaces. That's from the CDC we talked about creatine's health benefits. Believe it or not, creatine doesn't just help you build muscle. There's actually some health benefits. Now, our favorite place to buy creatine is Legion. They have a product called Recharge. Check it out. It's creatine monohydrate with L-carnitine for recovery. And Legion is a great company making great supplements. Very transparent in their labels. Here's your mind pump discount. Go to buylegion.com. That's B Y L E G I O N dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump at checkout. Get 20% off your first order. If you're a returning customer, you get double rewards points. Then I talked about red light therapy and its effects on healing injuries. There was actually a study that showed that people who use red light therapy healed faster, which is healing. quite remarkable. Amazing. Anyway, our favorite company for red light therapy, they make the best. They make the red light panels that you see in studies. They're the legit ones, not the fake stuff that's all over the internet. This company is called Juve. They make the best red light products. And of course, because you listen to Mind Pump, we got a hookup for you. Just go to juve.com. That's J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash Mind Pump. You'll get a free MAPS Prime program with the purchase of $500 or more and free shipping. By the way, they offer financing on all of their products. It's 0%. So it's like free money. It's pretty cool. Then Sweet. We, then we got into the fitness questions. So here's the first one. The first person wants to know, what are the top three exercises for blasting belly fat? Blast it. So we, we talked about that. The next question, this person says, look, is it normal to feel sore when you're moving into a new phase of training? The third question, how much protein do you guys recommend and how much do each of you consume? And the final question, is there a scenario, if any, that a vegan diet would be more beneficial for a fit and healthy individual than one that includes animal products. So we talk about veganism, uh, its potential benefits, and its potential detriments. Also, it's a brand new month. We're in June. Hello, it's summertime. Everybody wants to get in shape. You want to get fit. You want to look good. One of our most effective programs in the short term for fat loss and sculpting. In other words, in a short period of time, you burn a lot of calories, you get quick change in your body. This program is relatively intense. It is home gym friendly. You don't need a ton of equipment to do this program. It's MAPS HIT. It's one of our most popular program. HIT stands for high intensity interval training. There's three levels on there, by the way. You can start with the easier level, go to the moderate level, or go to the hard level. Okay, so if you're advanced or not as advanced, you can do this program. Anyway, this program is half off. It's 50% off to help you get ready for summer. Here's how you get that discount. Go to mapshit.com, that's M-A-P-S-H-I-I-T.com, there's two I's there, and use the code HIT50, that's H-I-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time! Ah, shit, Doug, you know it's my favorite time of the week! <laughs> he lost his voice again. <laughs> so much energy. We have five winners for Apple Podcasts and two winners for Facebook. The winners for the Apple Podcast reviews are Running Man 567, G Mill 3R, K Smithers, Mark MUC91, Tabby Prank, and for Facebook, we have Daniel Lowenstein and Marilyn Milan Shively. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. I read a crazy story. The other day, in uh, from Australia, 
Okay. <laughs> Usually you don't hear crazy <laughs> stories from anywhere other than Florida. You can always tell when he's going to say some punchline because he's already like crazy. I know. <laughs> yeah, this, huh? this, the you're timing's you're a, slower. You're, yeah, you're a dead giveaway guy. Yeah, so, yeah, hey, yeah, listen. This is 100%. a real hey, this is a real story. Okay. So two men snuck into a bedroom with machetes. So they had machetes, they sneak into a bedroom middle of the night because they were hired to carry out a stranger's sexual fantasy of being tied up in his underwear and stroked with a broom. This is true. <laughs> Wait, why did they need machetes? Uh, because it, this was part of the fantasy. <laughs> he hired two guys to break in his room. With machetes. Machetes, tie him up, and then stroke him with a broom. This is what it says. Wow. The problem was they went in the wrong house. No, they didn't. So they broke into the wrong house with machetes. What? And got arrested. Yeah. But they got acquitted. They're from Sydney, Australia. They got acquitted because they made they made apologies when, and they left. And the startled victim oh, was man. like, "What the?" <laughs> I feel like I saw that on a TV show. Like it, like somebody like used that as an excuse for breaking into a house. That oh, I was I'm into S and M. What yeah. is the no? We go back brushing them with the broom. What are they doing? Like he want, he's not like this is what it says exactly. I know I heard, but what's the what does that the mean? The sexual fantasy is to be tied up in yeah. his underwear. Got that. And to be stroked, stroked with a broom. What like, is stroked with a broom? Yeah, so just, it's like like a because like, I no I picture <laughs> brushing with a broom. Isn't that what you do with a broom? Or sweeping. Yeah, that would be, be rough. To be you swept be like or one brushed long with a broom. I'd, swoop. Just as got Like it. a swoop. Not yeah. like a... That's too much. Yeah. Ow. It's, mo- it's oh. more of a... It's more of a... <laughs> yeah. All the way down. That just, that just screams like rash like, immediately. Oh. You know? See, you know that's what, I mean? what it means? That's I, what I, stroke that's what nice. with a broom is? <laughs> I mean, how would, let's put, let's, let me put it this way. Well, you stroke a guitar, right? Kind of. You do. Yeah. yeah. You, one stroke. Yeah. So, you know... So let's say, this, <laughs> let's just put yourself in that situation. Would you want someone to on you, or would you prefer the? Yeah, you want one nice you, swoop. You guys if sound, you had to pick, you guys say it like it's like you, you've done I mean, it before. It's obvious. It sounds really, yeah. really enticing. Never here. done it, but I have a clear option. There's a clear choice for me. Well, uh, stroke. I mean, did this happen in his childhood? Like what? Like what? What does it become? That is his know. thing. Humans are we're just so we're so weird that yeah. we do the weirdest find the weirdest stuff can you can you top that like just keep coming up with these like every podcast oh, i'm where afraid you, i'm where, afraid we, where are you getting these i don't People know send them I to me now them. apparently yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i get them sent like, to check my, out this messed up one yeah. yeah i get them sent to me in my dms and people are like oh dude i heard you talking about whatever check this out this guy banged a battery yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh wow <laughs> remember when remember when i had my my doctor friend come in and talk about like the yeah, weirdest yeah, things yeah, that they've yeah, had yeah, to take yeah, the out of people yeah they had batteries and Weird. Didn't he say that was like common? Even didn't he say that happened more than once? Yo, yeah, dude. My my face. So I, when I used I to had train, a proctologist, the friend that told me all this stuff. No way, too. Yeah. Him too, right? Yeah, yeah. So toy cars and all that. The weird thing was, tell me how you guys became friends. Uh, uh that's a long story. <laughs> Justin's like, look, I'll train you for free. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't tell anybody about this. <laughs> yes. like, I'll come to your parties, whatever, dude. Just, just don't talk about it. Yeah. Uh, when I used to train this, you know, uh, doctors and stuff that, you know, once we get to know each other for a while, you know, we would talk about this stuff. And the thing that always surprised me was how they had, they were repeat like visits. So like somebody would come in this week, oh, you know, I slipped in the shower and, you know, I got a, you know, hot wheels up my butt. Right. And then they'd come in like a month later uh, <laughs> and it was always the same thing. Oh, I slipped in the shower. Yeah, he told me it was like a lot of carrots and cucumbers and, and like, <laughs> whoa, whoa, yeah, lot. yeah, yeah. And then he's just like, so he's asking, he's like, oh, weird. And it was the same story if they fell in the supermarket, obviously like, a vegetarian on it. And but he's like, okay, but it's 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 peeled. <laughs> wait a minute, wait <laughs> like, a Explain minute. yourself. Hey, what if you what if you're going grocery shopping and like, and <laughs> what a, that really happens? This is a one in a trillion up chance, but it's a chance. Uh, uh, it's possible. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Go. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, I can't tell anybody. No one's gonna believe. No this. one's ever gonna believe this. <laughs> How do I tell my yeah, wife? Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> like they get pulled, <laughs> like they're shoplifting, like they're scanning them. Oh. Where is it? Where's the item? Yeah. I don't. Wanna, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck! No one's gonna believe me. I did <laughs> slip at the grocery store. I fell on it. Okay. <laughs> Damn uh. it. Ah. Anyway, hilarious. Yeah, people are weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, hey, uh, dude, your, that story you told about your uh, about your balls coming through your shorts. Oh uh, yeah. I have. Had so many people message me and say that they, I, they I pulled got, on a bleak muscle or yeah, I, got oh, no. I got D. That's what I know. That's something like a lot of people are telling me about you, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, that was that was funny. It was I just knew it was funny when I was like in that situation. It was so ridiculous. Mm. This turned I don't know what it is, but like 
balls are a part of the conversation in my house uh, apparently these days. But like we're talking, <laughs> you wonder why? Well, it's, I think it, yeah, <laughs> I wonder why. I, wonder, I, I must have done this because yeah, yeah, they keep bringing it up. It, huh? Yeah, <laughs> they keep, they're like, "Mommy, you don't have balls." Like they're 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 like fixated on this fact that she doesn't have. So they're starting to call her "Mommy No Balls." Really? That's her nickname. Oh I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, dude, that like I was dying laughing. I'm like, that that's gonna stick. Yeah, you know, what? "Mommy No Balls" has a ring to How it. How old were you the first when you first got your first gym membership? Because I got a follow up question to this. Okay. Like, uh, what, what age were you the first time? Sixteen or seventeen? Yeah, I was okay. probably uh, fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Okay. So same here. Were you guys as traumatized as I was when you walked in the men's locker room the first time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all the naked guys. Yeah, because you don't see that anywhere, you know, and you're not you're not prepared. Yeah, they ain't like trying to hurry up, you know, mm-hmm. to cover themselves. And you're They're... not you're not prepared to see what happens with the aging process in that area. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. So you walk in and you're like, oh, that's yeah. Fuck. I know. <laughs> that's going to happen to me. I, yeah, and I did that to my kids early. And you, so <laughs> uh, that's my fault. Daddy, are you, are you <laughs> sick? Yeah. What's wrong with you? Why is one anyway. lower? Dude, you guys hear uh, about Trump's uh, executive order that he signed? Mm-mm. No. So he signed an ex- executive order. So here's what happened. Okay. He did a tweet, and Twitter censored his uh, tweet. Now, these are private platforms and organizations that- I believe have the right to post and and do whatever they want in terms of they can censor your stuff, they can not censor your stuff. Private company, totally up to them. However, they're also simultaneously protected from lawsuit. Like uh, you know, when you what is it called when you write something about someone and it's is it libel? What's it called, Doug? When people get slander, slander and stuff like that, right? Uh They're protected from that. Because they also position themselves like like the phone company. Like you can't sue the phone company for something you said on the phone because they're just neutral. Right. But what he said is you're not neutral. If you're if you're not, actively not if you're actively censoring people. If you're actively censoring, then you're gonna be like a like an editor, in which case oh, it, wow. then you can become liable for for lawsuit. You either have to let it all out or pick it yeah, pick you and choose can't be, you're held responsible. Can't have your cake and eat it. So too. they did an executive order which says that they can't. They can't censor uh or or if they do that they're liable for they're open for lawsuit now. Wow. Now you know, at first I had mixed feelings because I yeah. think that these organizations are private. Interesting. But he makes a great point. No, no, it's interesting. Because yeah. if you're if you're protected because because the phone company and other places they're protected by the law from lawsuits specifically for that. Yeah. But these companies can't be protected if they're going to be doing that. Yeah, not if they're acting just like any other news publication that has an agenda and they're like I don't like what they're saying here but they're allowing, you know, something that's completely uh, you know, in opposition to that uh to happen. Like that's not that that's not fair. Yeah. So kind of creates it's really unprecedented. Probably I mean mostly because these companies and social media organizations in general are, are relatively new. Yeah. Um, but oh boy, that's an interesting. That's gonna shake things up. Did, you, sure did you guys see what's going on with UFC Jim? Oh, um, no. dude, uh-uh. Tr- you didn't see that? I uh-uh. sent it over to you guys. They, I know you saw it, right? Because we were talking about this. Tell me, we didn't call it perfectly. Well, UFC uh, Jim going f- almost five x. So they're saying oh, that the yeah yeah I the did fees will go up there, and literally in the email says like a boat. They're going towards a boutique like gym, so they're going to try and reduce numbers and and charge and a little bit more premium, a lot, a lot more. more. Yeah, a lot yeah. more premium. <laughs> yeah, I think their memberships are on average thirty to forty dollars a month. Around so people there. are going oh, to pay like one hundred and fifty, two hundred bucks. A month. No, okay. they say the nine. You know, say they'll increase. Yeah, I guess you're right. Increase by ninety nine to one hundred and twenty nine. I think they said in that range. Oh wow! But they're yeah. going to maintain the square footage and everything. Oh yeah, no, that's less, changing. Yeah. But I, what, you know, tool uh, uh, towel service, maybe child care is free. Like you're going to start seeing. Plus, it's see. going to be slower. Yeah, you yeah. know, so you're not going to work out in there. It's not going to be nearly as crowded. I like that move. Though. Well, I mean, that's the only for move. a consumer. Like it's I would still only, go there. Here's the thing that I think is crazy is. And, and, you know, I don't see any other hey, way. Leave, leave it to Mark Mastroff to be the first to come out, probably, and because that's a talk about a scary, ballsy decision you have to make. Definitely. Mm-hmm. But the truth be told, I think it's the only decision. Yeah. So do I, because your two options are, and both options, you're going to lose members. Option one, try to keep everybody at twenty five, thirty bucks a month, but now limit severely limit how many people can come into your gym, space equipment out, 
close it throughout the day to to clean or whatever. Oh, that's a nightmare. You're going to lose tons of members that way. Yeah. The other option is to raise everybody's monthly dues, in which case you're also yeah. going to lose a lot of members. Everybody has adequate space. You know, it's it's just a little bit. I mean, I, I feel like the vibe in general is better in that direction than the other end trying to like conform to all these new regulations and, now, and now standards. Here's, right. And here's my opinion. I'm a fitness enthusiast. I value fitness. Right. So I don't mind spending. 150 bucks a month on a gym membership, but I'm going to put things in perspective for a lot of people. Okay. Most of us spend more money on our cell phone bills mm -hmm. than we do on, on, on gym access. Right. To me, it's, if you use the gym, it's very valuable it, it, in, in spending that much. The only reason why gym memberships are so damn cheap is because there was a race to the bottom, yeah. which started sometime in the late nineties, early two thousands that brought the prices way down and just packed them full of people who, you know, don't really care. Well, because the model was built on them not showing up. That's why now it can't be. Mm -hmm. Now now they need can't the members. They're going to need the base. Like, here's the thing, though. If you have a problem with the price, then buy at home equipment. Like, so that's going to keep blowing up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if because then if, if you want to really save money and it's about money for you, invest in a you know PRX type of rack that you set up and set yourself up within a year and a half's time, you've paid what you've paid in almost any normal gym membership, and then you have it for life if mm -hmm. that's your issue. Yes. Otherwise, I would I don't I'm with you, Sal. I don't mind the rates going up and better service. I mean, I I would like if my my local gym offered a towel a towel service. I actually prefer that. I yeah. look for gyms like that because I like you know clean equipment. I like less people. I like yeah because I value it. I really value the time I spend in the gym. So now here here's a second uh, part of that. Once things kind of quiet down, because sure at some point they will. At some point, you know the the virus people aren't going to be as scared of it. We'll, we, either we have a vaccine or we, we learn to live with it or whatever. At that point, once because this is a, in response to the regulations and to you know, consumer behaviors, at some point this may open up gyms coming back into the scene and doing the whole low price model again. Uh, you know, oh, At yeah. some point yeah. once things quiet down, I could see new players coming in and being like, hey, 20 bucks a month. Well, it'll be, you know, who who I'm watching a, yeah. closely is Planet Fitness because they're the extreme version of the super cheap model. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what percentage of their members would stay around paying? I, I'm curious. Yeah. I, I am, I, I, you know, and we can speculate all day, but we won't know until, you know, months have passed by. But, I mean, $10 is pretty damn low. And there might be enough people that are just like, yeah, it's just to have it. To have it, what's ten dollars? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many things are you guys paying on auto right now that you probably forgot about three months ago? Mm -hmm. That's you know four ninety nine, or I do that all the time. Oh, an app I want, and I yeah. want it right then and there, and then I forget to cancel it, and then it's hitting me for like six months. I mean, some of these people I'm sure are going to have ten dollar memberships and not even sweat it, so they might they might make it out. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're, you're also seeing a lot of gyms um, sell a lot of their equipment. You're starting to see. These gyms do fire cells on their equipment because they're closing down. So, which I mean, it's sad. Um, you know that 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 does hurt me. I really really have a lot of love for the brick and mortar you know fitness space. But on the flip side, for people who are ever, who are having trouble finding equipment because it's kind of hard to find, you know, um, you're probably going to have some opportunities to buy some decent equipment. Uh, from gyms closing down. I know some gyms are staying afloat by renting their equipment. Have you seen this? Mm, yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, some gyms are renting their barbells, dumbbells, cardio. Yeah, our friends at the Santa Cruz Power, they did that, like where they're renting out all their equipment and stuff. So people went in there and still were able to use their machines or, you know, they would take, uh, you know, some of their barbells and stuff and, at home and use them for a while. Yeah, uh, so, I mean, it's... I think of all the industries, um, the fitness space is going to get hit. I think fitness and restaurants, but I think fitness will get hit harder. I really do. I think people crave going out and eating out enough to where, and plus you can order in. Yeah, I think a lot of people are doing that. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think who who's closest to us. Um, you know, we know the owners at Luna, but I haven't spoken to her uh, uh, lately to see what they're doing. But I feel like. I mean, my my restaurant consumption really hasn't stopped. It's about the same. Maybe it's even higher. Sometimes I feel like you're just I, ordering in. Yeah, I'm just ordering in because we don't do very much right now. There's not. We can't go out on weekends or public or this and that. So a lot of times we order in like a you know nicer restaurant mm -hmm. food delivered to us. So I, I can't be alone. I can't be the only person that's doing that. So I would think that some of these restaurants are doing better than we would probably assume they were doing. I yeah. ordered yesterday. We ordered some uh, Mexican food, and it was really really good. 
called them up and you know told them I, I enjoyed their food or whatever. And they said, where's your location? And they said, oh, we don't have a restaurant. We're, we're a kitchen. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they're a kitchen that makes food and, and they do both, um, what do they call it, farmer's markets, mm-hmm. and they deliver through um, like DoorDash and stuff like that. Oh, interesting. Which I oh. thought was- Where did you a, find that's that? A, that's a great model it was right on the it was on, it was on DoorDash. No kidding. Yeah, so, and I didn't know this. If you if you go on there, you can't tell, right? It you just see a logo. Up. Right. Yeah. I wonder how many people are doing. Are well, start- I told you about the Chuck yeah, Chuck Cheese. E. Cheese is, I told you about uh, the Chuck E. Cheese move. So yeah, yeah but <laughs> there's people out here hustling out of their kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah, no, well, that makes I'm sure you. I'm sure they had to go. Obviously, I'll be honest. I mean, that is the one part of this whole. Th- I can't like uh, look forward to it more. Like I, 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 I used to love just uh, you know spending time on the weekend, like going on a date, like on a real nice restaurant. It's like, dude, not having that sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't wait till that. That you know, at least some of the. Some of the restaurants that we look forward to just hanging out and like having good service and, and good food right fresh. Because, dude, it's one thing to get it, but also in a box and plastic and materials and then transport your house. It like tastes like shit after the time yeah. it gets to your house. Yeah, I, I right. I'm at. I'm funny at the. I'm at the point now where I'm like. Let's just go for a drive. <laughs> you know, we get the car. I know. Oh. We just drive. I Katrina do a lot of that, back. Dude. Katrina yeah. and I do that all the time, dude, just yeah. to get out. Yeah. yeah. Walks and drives. That's yeah. like all we got. This. Yeah. Well, you know, reports are coming out now. I know the CDC said that uh, COVID is actually quite difficult to transmit through surfaces. So they're saying, mm-hmm. you know, you don't need to wipe down your groceries or whatever. It's quite difficult to, you know, to, to, con- to, to get it that way. Um, they're saying the main way you get it is if you're around somebody who's sick and you're around them for a while. And then another report that came out came out that said that it sh- it seems like people build an, a robust immune response to being infected uh, with COVID, which is good news. That means that it's likely that if you've had it once, you're you're not going to get it again, or the, the odds are really low, well, which is awesome. really good. Yeah. Now, what are you guys feeling amongst your like family and friends? Like, do you guys have like a, still a divide of like people that are like open this shit up and ready to go out, then other people still freaked out, or like where where are your family and friends? I think at? it's it's like a lot less. Like it's a little more flexible. Like even with like neighbors and people around, like we'll see at parks and stuff. Like we talk about it. I mean, there's some people that are still real ultra worried about everything, but I feel like it's lightened up quite a bit like i don't see as many people with masks like constantly everywhere they walk yeah so yeah my family's pretty much over it they just want yeah, my family's yeah they're, they're in the position where they're like look we know the risks now let us take the risk or not it's up to us open let play because you know in, in for the listeners who don't know here in california and in the bay area we're still you know slowing i mean it's still slow to reopen i know cases are kind of still climbing in california i know a lot of that's coming out of la um, but we're still we're still not you know back to where we were in terms of things opening. So my family's pretty much yeah. like screw that or whatever. Uh, although for the older people in my family, everybody's very careful. So nobody's you know making physical contact with my grandparents. That's or, smart. Yeah, it's responsible. Yeah. I mean that's how it should be. We're keeping the family part. You know, get together small, below you know under ten people, which. For my family, it's quite challenging. It's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah, I'll invite like a few people, and then <laughs> one, one from each. Party. Why not do you oh. invite me? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Next thing you know, they're like, "Hey, can I bring so and so? What if I bring?" I'm like, "No, no. It's just, just us. Let's yeah. just yeah. keep it down to you know eight people." Anyway, <laughs> dude, I was um, reading more about creatine. Um, I really think creatine is going to be the 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 next big not muscle building, you know, performance supplement. It's been that way for a long time. But I bet you creatine is the next big supplement that the everyday person just takes, whether they work out or not, yeah. because of all the stuff that I've been reading about it. So I've, I was looking up health benefits of creatine, and remarkably, there are lots and lots of studies on the health benefits of creatine, not having anything to do with strength or athletic performance or anything like that. So there were studies that showed that it benefits people with neurological disorders, like uh, Parkinson's and, and other types of disorders oh, wow. actually have, they actually benefit from supplementing with creatine, um, lowers blood sugar. So they're showing that this may actually be some people with diabetes may benefit from supplementing huh. with creatine. And then you know how I've talked about the, the cognitive boosting effects of potential effects of creatine? In older people, that's actually pretty pronounced. Hmm. You know? So the way, and, and this is just for the listeners, the reason why this is, uh, the case is because creatine 
improves or increases the amount of ATP in, in your body. And ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. And this is one of the main uh, sources of energy for all of your cells. So if you have more of this energy, your cells operate better um, and you, you just, you know, all of your functions uh, seem to benefit. And of course, it's extremely safe or whatever. And I'm sure I'm going to get DMs of, uh, from people who are going to ask me where to find it. Um, Legion is one of the companies we work with. They make mm -hmm. a good one called Recharge, which has got the, the creatine mono, monohydrate. Now, it. It's crazy to see like where it started and how they were trying to push and promote creatine forever and like how the, you know, it was so new that they were scared that it was going to have all these uh, negative effects to it. And we even had people coming in and, and warning us about all these potential things that sounded like side effects for steroids and things. And, and, it, and just to see like how it's progressed and how people have kept using it and then kept studying it and seeing like all these benefits that you wouldn't even have thought like down down the road it's pretty crazy you know what i did in, uh, not really intentionally i just was uh was wanting to do the sauna after my workout but you read a study a while back and i wish i remember what it was or who we were talking to but you were talking about that you that there may be benefits to uh taking the creatine right after the workout at the same time doing the red light therapy do you remember that no so that was my own speculation okay that's so, what it was i thought yeah. it was something that you read on here so post workout happened the other day and i was thinking about it. i'm like oh i wonder uh, if i'm going to yeah. feel like a supercharged feeling yeah i love i love red light like post workout that's like one of my favorite well things. yeah I, actually i have something on that i'll i'll touch on that in a second but first let me talk about what i was doing you have to rub it into your skin you have to sprinkle the creatine on Shut it. What? The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you this, didn't this. get him for a second. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, even yeah, a second. Just pour yeah. into powder. Yeah, 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 really? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, so creatine, uh, you uptake more of it post-workout, but it's a small effect, so it's not going to make that big of a difference. Otherwise, you could take it any time. But if you want to be super specific, take creatine post-workout. The Legion creatine recharge also has... L-carnitine in there, which also amplifies the, you know, helps with recovery. Now, the reason why I speculated it'd be good with red light therapy is because red light um, boosts your cells, your mitochondria's ability to use ATP. So it makes sense to me that if you take creatine mm. and use it at the same time, like amplify uh, it. You might get an, an amplified, uh, you know, effect. Mm. But uh, you you brought that up, so I want to talk about. I actually wrote it down because I, I didn't want to forget. So there was a study uh, in South Korea on uh, red light therapy. And so they did a 15-month study treating 395 sports-related injuries with red light therapy. And they showed significantly shortened recovery times with red light treatments. Now, in 2018, I didn't know this, the National Association of Sports Medicine endorsed red light therapy for treating injuries, pain, and strain. Wow. So it speeds up tissue's ability to regenerate. Now, we know we know about that on skin. Does it right? say at what rate in comparison to normal? It said significantly. So okay. I don't know exactly yeah. what that looks like, but if you're a high-level athlete- Oh, that's exciting. Man. You know, yeah. getting you there, you know, three days faster is a big deal. Oh, it's huge. If you're a, if you're any kind of like aspiring athlete to have one of those units at your house, you know, like I would have like killed for something like that. Any, any recovery aid that- actually is legitimate and has scientific backing behind it is something that you should invest in. Yeah. Now the problem is when you go online and you look up like red light therapy, there's a lot of crap out there. It's oh, like, yeah. it's just like red light bulbs, you know what I mean? Or, Oh yeah. It's a big, they're just going to like burn you or That's they it. don't, they don't concentrate, they don't concentrate the energy in the right way. You're not getting the, so what you want is you want the red light that they use in the studies um, which is, you know, relatively expensive. It's high quality. Yeah, yeah. Um, you and pay then, for what you get. Yep. And, and uh, you know, we obviously work with Juve, and that's because they use the same types of red lights that they use in studies. So they're actually, you know, they're actually legit. So yeah. have whatever. you guys been getting as many DMs as I've been getting ever since uh, your last two Instagram posts? Oh, my gosh. Which ones? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's definitely, like, gotten more intense as of late. Like yeah. The last yeah, and I have – I just – I have a really hard time. I had I had written something, then I didn't post it. I did a video, and then I didn't post it. And I, I I'm struggling right now with with putting anything out in in relation to what's going on 
because I don't like a lot of what I see, and then I also don't want it to be misunderstood how yeah. I convey that message. Well, we talked about Definitely. it, and we waited, and so and I've gotten lots of DMs also. I know you have too, yeah. Justin. Yep. Um, we're in a position where we, we have a lot of listeners, and they want to know where our what our stances is, you know, stances are, and our opinions. So based off of what we all said and, and you know talked about, and I know you guys very well, and I wrote something out because I wanted to make sure that we represent ourselves mm -hmm. uh, the right way, that's uh, accurate and, and honest. Um, and um, uh, I'll, I'll read it right now so people kind of get an idea of where we stand. So we have gotten lots of DMs. Um, and the truth is at first we wanted to say, we didn't want to say anything. We wanted to kind of keep it to ourselves because this is a very serious and charged situation. And we see lots of people on social media, uh, influencers and celebrities giving their opinions. And to be honest, uh, most of them seem fake. This is why we wanted to kind of be quiet for a second. And if you're a regular listener of Mind Pump, you know how much we value integrity and authenticity. So we gathered our thoughts. Okay. So here's what we think. Like most people, we saw the video of George Floyd and we were totally appalled disgusted. and disgusted completely. It was a clear display of a terrible abuse of power. Clear. Now, days later, we saw videos of small businesses getting destroyed and of innocent people being attacked for defending their businesses and properties. We also have tremendous respect for the good men and women in blue who keep us safe every single day. And that's all we're going to say about it. And it's not because we don't have more to say, but because we think actions speak louder than words. So we're going to put our money where our mouth is. Now, here's what we did. We put together a t-shirt that reflects our 100% opinion, and every dollar of profit that comes from the sales of this t-shirt are going to go to two organizations. On top of that, we're going to match the profits with our own money to double the donation. So the first organization is the Nonprofit Center for Policing Equity, which works with objective data to address and change discriminatory practices. Those need to change. The other organization is our local police department because we believe that most cops are good people who want to keep their local community safe. Now, the shirt is going to say peace, love, unity now because we are against violence and we firmly believe that there are more good people than bad people out there. And if we all stick together peacefully with steadfast unity, we can make real change. Our first question is from Adam Hayes Fit. What are your top three exercises for blasting belly fat? <laughs> Did you pick this up? Uh, uh, I, lo I love blasting things. It's yeah. like, uh, like my favorite pastime. Yeah, okay, so... Um, I, feel like this, I feel like this is a trick question. Here's why this is a good question. Because, <laughs> Blasted. And we've covered this in, in many previous podcasts, but it's been a little while since we've talked about this. You can't spot reduce fat loss. But you can blast. You can. Yeah, you can. Hell yeah. <laughs> you can shoot yourself in the... No, no. You can't spot reduce, meaning, let's say I let's say I'm 30 pounds overweight, but uh, I don't mind how my, my whole body looks, but I really don't like how my legs look. So I just want my legs to get le leaner. I can't dictate where my body's going to burn body fat from simply by training that particular area more or doing something special. The way your body burns body fat and stores body fat is largely due to genetics. Hormones do play a role. So like, you know, women whose hormone levels tend to be off, uh, they might store more belly fat than normal. Men, the opposite, they may store more fat in their thips, uh, hips and thighs if their estrogen levels are high. But it's not a huge, huge effect. It's mainly dictated by genetics. You can't train your abs and burn body fat from your abs. It just doesn't. No, it's got to get it from everywhere. Doesn't work. That now way. that being said, we can pick three exercises that we like for your abs, right? These aren't these aren't the the, the what he say blast your yeah, abs? Bl belly fat. Yeah, that's belly, like straight off an infomercial. I'm right. just imagining like you know those graphics where it just shows like this this Incinerate. gun and like lasers like pew pew pew, pew yeah, yeah. and they're <laughs> gone like, just like that. So like, I I love. Uh, a perfect setup. So I love to teach that. Uh, Serene did a video not long ago on that. Uh, so if you're not on our Mind Pump TV on YouTube, make sure you, you check that video out. Um, I also like a just a standard reverse crunch and then full mm -hmm. lever. So if I'm picking three that are my favorite, uh, those are three of my favorite. Yeah. Now, doing great ab exercises aren't going to burn more body fat from your midsection. I mean, you burn it from everywhere. But uh, having more developed abs will can contribute to the illusion of looking being leaner in the midsection because as the abs develop, they show up more at 
higher body fat percentages. This happened to me when I really first learned how to really train my abs properly. So my body fat didn't go down, but I looked leaner in my abs because my abs stuck out more. Uh, I love long lever physio ball crunches, my favorite exercise for midsection. Um, I love active planks. If you do active planks properly, that really builds uh, the muscles of the midsection. That really got my abs uh, to pop out as well. And then my third exercise would be uh, reverse crunches. Love reverse crunches. Yeah, I like decline, decline uh, crunches and sit-ups. And I like rotational moves um, mainly because of the functional aspect to those. And I think that we just don't get enough rotation in general in our workouts. And so this is a great place to do that is any kind of trunk rotation, uh, whether or not you're keeping your ab or your hips uh, from rotating with you or you're trying to keep them uh, anchored down so you're anti-rotating across. Uh, either way, you're going to get that transverse abdominals. You get your obliques. Uh, so I'm really a big fan of those. And uh, any kind of isometric, like you mentioned, planks or things like that, but also just, you know, carries uh, for me work great in terms of stabilizing weight and, and really activating the abs isometrically. All right. Next question is from Mickey M. Fit. Is it normal to feel some soreness when going into a new phase of training? Or does that mean you took the workout too far? Um, these days, if I'm consistent, almost every single time I do get sore, and I don't get sore very often, but the times I may get sore, it's because I moved into a new phase. So it's, it's pretty predictable. Like if I change the rep range from low to high, or I go from straight sets to supersets, or even just changing the exercise, you know, let's say I'm practicing barbell squats and getting really good at them and I train them for a long, long time. And then I think to myself, I'm going to go on a run of Bulgarian split stand squats. The first week or two of doing them, I tend to feel sore. And I just think this has to do with the fact that your body's not used to it. And you're going to, anytime you're, when your body gets really good at something, it gets very good at it. And it also reduces the damage that whatever you're doing uh, can potentially cause. That's part of why you get good at it. Your body's adapting, trying to prevent damage. So when you try something different, it's a new skill, new movement, um, and you're more likely to cause damage. Does that mean you overdid it? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, if you're sore for like two days, three days, yeah. But uh, if you're sore for like a day, that's that's normal. Th and that's and this why is a really hard question to answer because it's it really depends on how sore are we talking about, right? Like I'm sore right now. Uh, I've been really inconsistent the previous two or three months. Uh, my consistency's ramped up the last couple of weeks. And so I kind of feel sore all the time right now, you know, between whatever I'm hitting. I, I definitely am happy. I was just telling you guys the other day, I was like, it's been a while since I even did ab work and it didn't take very much. And like my abs are super sore from what I thought was very little work. So there's definitely going to be that, uh, if it's new, changing the phase, you haven't done an exercise that exercise in a long time, you're, you're you know, 99% of the time you're going to be sore. But if it gets, it's, I look at it for myself, like, if it's debilitating, if it keeps me from doing normal movements or it like it's, I'm so at sore to the touch, mm -hmm. I know I, I way overreach. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I don't mind feeling a little bit of soreness. Like I worked out. That's a, I think that's a really good feeling because you, in order to adapt and keep growing, changing, right. We want to feel, you want to be overreaching or stretching a little bit. But the common thing is that I think most people hammer themselves and they really overreach. You just barely kind of want to overreach, right? So being sore a little bit, okay, but you're the only person that can really gauge how sore you feel from this workout compared to what you normally feel like. Yeah, I think that's why it's it's nice to have a coach uh, taking you through programs initially because they do a lot better job of gauging that if you're unfamiliar with what that mm -hmm. looks like. Because you know, personally, I've definitely had to go through a lot of, of hellish uh, you know, workouts where I totally overreached and realized that oh my god like that just hammered me i can't do that and replicate that again and so it's like you know going through that myself then i know uh what signs and things to look out in the workouts in terms of you know whether or not uh this is this is going to be like adequate amount of uh, of load or reps or volume and and you know and then also see how they rebound uh, the next time well you guys i'm sure do this so the, and uh, I do this at least now, like I'm so aware of like what that feeling feels like in the workout that, for example, right. I had, you know, the other day I was like, you know, I'm just going to throw, you know, 135 on my back. I'm going to do walking lunges for five sets. That was going to be my leg training for the day. And I got into like by set three, I was like, 
oh shit yeah yeah, yeah. like so I better I, calm down you're yeah, familiar I, with the feeling right i already felt like i could tell how pumped i was i could tell how tight i was i could even start to feel that burning sensation like i'm gonna be sore from this already so even though i had written down that i was going to do five sets I didn't because I knew that I, I, this was going to be enough to definitely get my body to adapt and change. There was no need for more. It's because I think the big problem is people go into a, a workout or they'll try a new phase or change it. And what they're trying to do is see how much they can take. That becomes the mentality like, yeah. oh, I can do more. I can push more. That's the wrong mentality. Um, what you want to do is go into it thinking, how much do I need to do to get my body to respond? That's all. If it's new... You don't need to do, you don't even need to do as much as you were doing before. So in other words, if I'm, here's what happens to me. Let's say I'm, I'm training and it's five weeks and I'm in a low rep phase. At that, at the end of that five week period, my intensity is pretty high in that low rep range. Then when I move to a high rep range, I don't match the same intensity uh, that I had in my low rep range. It's a lower intensity because it's a new stimulus and I can feel it. I can feel it in my body. I go easier than I was before. And it's because I'm going into the workout with the mentality how much is going to be requi required to get my body to change versus how much can I do? How much hard? How hard can I go? Next question is from Josem279. How much protein do you guys recommend? How much do you each consume? Oh, yeah. The protein, the magic mat ma uh, macronutrient. Mm -hmm. So, protein, um, I'm going to speak generally and then I'll speak more specifically. Generally speaking, studies are. Pretty conclusive. There's a lot of studies on this. And what they find is for an athlete, for somebody who wants to build muscle, for someone who wants to maximize recovery, build strength, prevent muscle loss while dieting, so all those things, uh, you want to consume about 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 or 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. Okay, So if you weigh 100 pounds, that would be 60 to 100 grams of protein. Okay, So 0.6 to 1 gram of Per pound of, and this is now this is true for non obese individuals. If you have a lot of body fat on your body, don't use your weight, use your lean body mass um, as your gauge. Now, that being said, there's an individual variance when it comes to protein. I've worked with a few, not a lot of clients, but I've worked with a few clients where, you know, when they started to push the protein, their digestion wasn't good, they didn't feel good. And so these clients did better on the lower end of that scale. And then I've worked with other people who just thrive off of protein and who push it even above one gram of protein per pound of body weight and seem to do great. So, you know, at the end of the day, you really got to listen to your body. But the studies generally do show that a high-protein diet uh, is superior. Well, I've also met people that are like, and myself, where if I'm not eating protein, muscle falls off my body. It just it I my body it just falls off falls right <laughs> off, dude. It's, Where'd it go? Yeah, under you the might couch. Need to see a doctor, I, I mean, it's not. It's <laughs> it's uh it's hard for me. I don't I, I and I don't know if it's because I grew up eating a ton of sugar and carbs and that was the main source of calories for most of my life. Although I like to think that I've trained myself to be like meat first, protein first type of eater. I still find myself if I'm not tracking diligently or really mindfully going after protein. I undereat it. I mean, just the other day, I had I had a pound of steak. I had four eggs, a piece of beef jerky, and something else that had protein. That's still under. Mm -hmm. That's still under 150 yeah. grams. So that's you know four different sittings that I'm going after protein. Still not enough protein to hit my 180 200 mark. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, and and for me, I know as soon as I fall off of that, and I'm not making effort to do that, and then you add in the fact I'm not going to the gym and lifting as consistently, and then the muscle just falls off my body uh, really really quick. So you know, it really does depend on the person. Then I've noticed other people who, you know, my ex who was a competitor. I mean, she could eat uh, 800 calories and 40 grams of protein, and that girl kept muscle on all the time. Like, she did nothing. It would took everything out of her to, to just lose a pound on the scale. So everybody's body is different, and so you need to figure out if that is it. But I, it, I tell you, it's, it's, it was a missing key for me. It was a key for a long time that I really didn't focus on when I began tracking and like said, okay, in fact, I remember going through a phase where I was like, all I'm going to focus on is protein. I'm not going to worry about my carbs. I'm not going to worry about my fat. I'm going to just make sure I hit that one gram of protein per lean body mass and see what happens. 
And I tell you, you know, I, I never put together a streak like that. And my body was another one of those, you know, paradigm shattering mm -hmm. moments we always talk about on this show. That was one of them for me. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I found about 130 grams of protein a day is pretty good, which is not a ton when you can. Right now, I weigh about 200 and maybe 10 pounds. I, I've gone as high as 240, 250 grams of protein. Mm. My digestion goes a little off when that happens. You start to get the. You know, the notorious, well, you're throwing more shakes in at that point, right? Yeah, and you get the notorious, you know, you know, bodybuilder farts and all that yeah, stuff, which oh, yeah. is oh. not a great sign. Not fun. But uh, again, about 130 grams of protein um, is good for me. If I if I go a little higher than that, I'm good. When I start to go below that, I start to notice that you know I'm not as solid. I'm not recovering as fast. So that's that's my number. Yeah, I'm just constantly seeking protein uh, in my diet alongside, uh, you know, fats and, and vegetables and cheese. Uh, <laughs> which you can't. That's the macro nutrient. Fat and cheese, dude. Yeah. Fat and protein. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Uh, but yeah, I don't really do as well on carbs. So I, I use carbs more as a way of like uh, planning out the fact that I'm going to have a, a more. Uh, intense like endurance filled type of a workout where uh, I, I need a little bit more uh, in the workout so then I'll up my carbs for the, for the day or, or you know the day before to give me adequate uh, energy but other than that I'm just really manipulating my energy with carbs more than anything and staying pretty consistent with the amount of uh, protein I eat. Mm. Next question is from Ander Beth is there a scenario if any that a vegan diet would be more beneficial for a fit and healthy individual than one that includes animal products. Okay, so generally speaking, and this is the now the studies are pretty good on this. Okay, if you're allergic. Yeah, <laughs> now the studies are pretty good on this. Uh, people tend to have more nutrient deficiencies when they avoid meat. There are certain nutrients that are very difficult to find in vegan sources. Some of them, some people would say, are impossible to find. So most people do better with a mixed diet. This is also based on my own experience. I have very, very few people. I've trained people for over 20 years. There's very few people that I've seen that do better all the way vegan and very few people I've ever seen who go in the opposite direction. Most of my clients always did best health-wise, being able to maintain it, performance, fat loss, muscle building, you name it, with a kind of omnivore type diet. Now, I did have some clients, not a lot, um, but there's only a couple I can think of right now that did, did better vegan. Um, one of them was, you know, that really stands out was a, a doctor that I trained is a great guy, super smart dude. Um, he did a lot of endurance type sport, hired me to, to build some of his strength. And he did one of those, uh, those, those donation trips, those doctors without borders where he donates his services. And sometimes those, those, the, it takes you to weird places and you got to live differently and live among people or whatever. And he, he had to live in a community that ate, uh, mostly vegetable foods, and so he inadvertently became vegan. And when he came back, he's like, man, I never felt better. I have more energy, this and that. Now, he, granted, he was eating healthy before. He, ate, he did, It wasn't like he went from bad to eating healthy. He went from omnivore to vegan. I didn't believe him. Um, at this time, I was a little bit more of a zealot. So we threw meat back in. Sure enough, he started getting more negative symptoms, took it out, and he felt amazing. And uh, so I told him, well, you got to listen to your body. I think there's always an individual variance. You're always going to find people that do better eating one way versus another. But generally speaking, most people, in my experience, do better with a blend. And I think, too, to, to say healthy or healthy like that, it's not fair, right? Because somebody could have an intolerance to something, right, and that, and be still considered healthy. It doesn't make you unhealthy. Right. But that is, but constantly hitting that intolerance, getting your immune response, right, right. that's unhealthy. And so that, but that's just it, though. Like, there's a lot of people out there, like, a question like that is, you're like, hey, if, if, all things are equal and, and people are exactly healthy, then yeah, most of the research is going to point somebody into a more balanced diet. Mm -hmm. But what we don't know, because we're finding out more and more, especially about the gut, that a lot of people have all these intolerances and issues going on that it could be red meat. I have had clients like that. I've had clients that, you know, we just cut red meat out, but then they could have chicken and fish and everything else like that. And, we, and they did phenomenal. So it's, it's rarely ever uh, either or, and I hate that we try and do that, right? Why do we have to like make it into a, mm. you know, either you're in this camp or you're in that camp? It's like, 
you know, figure out what foods agree with you and don't agree with you. And if you can find a way that that there are certain meats that do serve you and other ones don't, well, cut out the ones that don't serve you and keep the ones that That's do right. serve you in. It's hard because uh, versus saying that you have to go all vegan because red meat doesn't well, didn't agree you, with you. Yeah, didn't you eat eggs and figure out that it was really the egg whites that you had the biggest problem with? Yeah, right? yeah. The, I mean, these guys make fun of me, but you know, when we make breakfast, I'll make like a huge sunny side up, uh, you know, like eight eggs in a pan and I'll cut, they'll see what'll be left over will be circles cut out of the egg whites where I'm cutting out the yolks. I, I identified for me that egg whites, I have an intolerance to them. When I eat a lot of them, I start to get skin rashes, my digestion is off. Um, but egg yolks are fine. Now you and should, egg ex- yolks you are should great. explain to people why that, like we talked the other day about gut permeability and the theory, what I mean, I would think, and I'd like to hear you, it's your own body, right? What do you think is why egg whites is yours? Well, I ate a lot of eggs growing up. Eggs are a great uh, source of protein and nutrients and cholesterol and choline, all phenomenal for muscle building. So growing up, I would just eat a shit ton. Of, I mean, I used to eat, I would eat a dozen eggs in the morning, no problem, right? Throw them into shakes. And the problem is, is I had other eating practices that caused inflammation in my body. So my gut was kind of probably constantly inflamed. Well, when your gut's inflamed, the the protein you know particles travel through the gut when they're not supposed to. Your body recognizes these particles as foreign invaders because it doesn't belong there. It's supposed to travel through the, the lower intestines or other parts of the body. And so you mount an immune response. So what ended up happening is I would eat eggs all the time, and all of a sudden I'd eat eggs, and I'd get digestive issues, or I'd get rashes. Couldn't I didn't connect the two for a long time yeah. um, until eventually I cut them out and noticed, oh wow, I feel much better. And then I thought it was all eggs. And then I, I read a, an article that talked about how when people have a food allergy or food intolerance, it's often the white and not the yolk. The mm-hmm. yolk uh, doesn't have anti. So the white has antibodies in it. That's why they think. There's more intolerances to egg whites to protect the yolk. So cutting them out, I feel great. Well, I just, look, you guys have watched the show Naked and Afraid, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you watch the show, I mean, there's been vegans on there. There's been different, like, vegetarians and people have problems with meat. Inevitably, the ones that last, you know, towards the end, they end up eating, you know, a piece of meat because their body, like, is almost revolting mm. against them. And so it's just hard for me to, to see, you know, thriving on just a plant-based diet, uh, you know, given that circumstances. Now in the new world, we can get away with that because yeah. of the way we process things and the way that we, you know, present it to where our body can digest it better. But, you know, like given the fact that you're in nature, you have two options, I just don't see you thriving. No, no, you can't. And, and again, because we live in the modern world, there's, you can go to the grocery store and you can have access to an incredible variety of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and they can complement each other and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's up to you. You know, it's up to Definitely. your body. Um, there's a huge individual variance, and and I understand uh, that this can be hard for some people. Our food is our identity. You know, I mean, the whole cultures around food. We're very proud of food. So you know, I'm a vegan. You know, or I'm I only eat keto, and it's like it becomes your religion. Mm-hmm. That's silly. Here's the other thing. Your body may work well eating a particular way now. Doesn't mean it's going to work like that forever. Context changes, stress changes. You may develop an intolerance. You may develop bacterial, you know, imbalances that make eating and digesting the foods you eat now um, a problem. So be open minded. Listen to your body. At the end of the day, I think that's the best uh, advice that we could give. Look, we record Mind Pump on video as well as audio, so you can watch us on YouTube. You can watch and watch and listen to the podcast on YouTube. It's the Mind Pump Podcast on on YouTube. Check us out. You can also find us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. Me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.